Last time I was looking for something particular here in this town and wasn't quite sure where it was. Well, after looking up a guide, I remembered where exactly it was. I knew it was in this pit, but I thought it was where that little boy was standing, and I thought he had to move in order for me to obtain it. Turns out... Didn't even need to have him move. We got another chunk of mithril. And so with that in mind, greetings people of the world! Matthew back with you here in Nevoa Autism for the continuation of Let's Play Shining Force 2! So, last time... We departed from the new Grand Seal and started to make our way to look for new towns and new friends. And we made it to our first new town in Ribble, but we didn't necessarily make friends right off the bat because they thought that we had come to invade the continent. And so it took the assistance of our Phoenix friend Peter to set them straight. And now that they've done that, we've been able to also pick up along the way a new ally. Um, who I will show off in a moment. We got the services of May, who is a centaur who also acts as an archer. So she'll be accompany accompanying us from now on. So that means at this point, we now have nine party members. And so with that, we are now prepared and ready to move on to our next location. So we're departing from Ripple and heading further to the east. So we'll be coming along another encounter along the way. There is a cave over here, um, but this cave cannot be accessed at this time. I'm Passaran of Ribble. I'm studying the ancient petroglyphs. Rhoda told me about a family who has an ancient tomb in Polynesia. According to my studies, his house should be around here somewhere. Or maybe it's to the east. Well, he's actually right, it is to the east. But we can't exactly access it at this point. But we will be coming back to this cave later. <laughs> yeah, as always with this game, remember that cave for later, viewers. <laughs> yeah, like I said in the previous episode, you will backtrack a lot in this game because there's so many places that you can open up that you don't get access to right away, but once you get the required resources, then you'll be able to access them. Alright, so now we are nine party members strong. And we now will be... Well, for, before we go any further, let's drop our count, enemy count. One, two, three, four up here at the top. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Um, and it looks like it may be just eleven. Oh, nope. Twelve. There's a bat down here in the lower bottom. So, yeah, we'll have to watch out for him, too. But the big thing we'll have to worry about as well is also, of course, getting our char <coughs> sorry, getting our characters leveled up. But the benefit with May is that we now have someone else who can attack from range, and that's going to be very helpful as we continue along here. It's something that I've always um, implemented as part of my strategy for playing this game is making sure to have an opportunity to. Um, put in people who can not only fly, but also be able to attack in range. I've always thought that this is very important to my success. Alright, Kiwi, bring up the rear, as only a tortoise can. Alright, now this brings up an interesting situation. I'm worried about... I want Kazan to make an attack here and cast Blaze 2, but I'm also worried that... If I put him in this position, he will be in some pretty big danger. Let's hope I can get some party members to him in time and alleviate my fears. But in the meantime, Kazan does gain another experience level. I'm right, hoping for an opportunity for reinforcements to come in. Still waiting. Alright, this'll do. It's Bowie, though. Not necessarily the best choice to come in, because of course he's the leader, but we need him to get experience levels too. Everyone needs experience levels. Alright, um, Chester, I want you to attack this goblin down here at the bottom. And just finish it outright! <laughs> uh, Chester putting on a clinic. Alright. This is perfect opportunity for Slade to possibly get the kill if he can be strong enough. He is. 
He did get an, impre an improved weapon at long last in the previous episode, so... He definitely is a fortunate recipient in this instance of getting the kill. Alright, Sarah, why don't you wail on this goblin? Ah! Crap. No good. It's been very rare for me so far in this Let's Play to have my enemies dodge my attacks. Oh, passes on Sarah, goes for Bowie. Scores 7. And gets an Encore. That's not good. That's never good. Because, of course, that's how Bowie died at... How Bowie suffered the first death of the game. For my party, was because someone hit him twice in one turn. For insane damage. So, we're going to have Sarah pull back here. And she will cast Steel to protect Bowie. Do what you gotta do, girl. Get Bowie back to full health. And now... Chester, why don't you... Soften up this goblin a bit. Oh, it'll be more than a bit. Or it'll be nothing at all. <laughs> Ooh, this, this goblin is pretty tough. He's put, doing a pretty good job on evasion. No doubt about it. Uh-oh. Yeah, which is in range for magic casting, and this will be 9 points against Chester. Alright, Slade, let's have you... Let's have you go after the witch here. Ah! Crit hit for 11! And it's enough to get him another level! Alright. Yeah, Slade, after an early knockout a few episodes ago, definitely making a statement now. But now we need to make a statement on this goblin here. Um, let's come this way and try and launch an attack. This time it counts for eight. This time Bowie gets it done, and now May gets her first attack. Donning it in for nine points. Not bad, not bad. That's a good start. Alright, Jaha, finish it off. There we go. Heck, he's so strong he could have finished him off <laughs> with the, not even that much of a um, freebie. Because that, that pretty much was a freebie with one point left. Any damage counts as a kill. Kiwi, let's see how you do. Ooh, an eight. Nice. Alright, Kazza, we're going to have you ignore the witch and we're going to have you continue to advance here. That dwarf's still not in range yet, but we've got it close. Alright, just I don't want you to finish off that witch, I want you to weaken this dwarf a bit. Okay, witch goes after Kiwi, hopefully with a regular attack. She did. Because one magic attack will is pretty much instant death for Kiwi. Alright, Bowie, come down here and you take a swing at this dark dwarf. Six points. But it's enough to get him another level. And Slade, let's have you go ahead. Um, I don't think your attack is strong enough to kill off the dwarf, so let's have you kill the witch instead. And there we go. Yeah, it's because the dwarf has higher defense that, for precautionary purposes, I'm having Slade kill off the witch instead of the dwarf. Alright, Sarah, let's have you come in. And so far, we're, do we're doing a pretty good job. We haven't had any really devastating attacks as of yet. Pushed against, set against us, so we're doing okay. Alright, Kiwi, coming in. Hit the dwarf for me. It's only three, but it's better than nothing. Peter, this time, he was getting kills like crazy because so many enemies were close and previously. This time, though, he's definitely fallen behind. Oops. I meant to use a little bit of magic, but... Oh, again? What? Ow. 
Okay, that that's just crazy. Okay, I want to have Chester hold his position here and have Bowie step back. Because, yeah, he needs healing. Alright, Slade, take a stab at him. It's enough! In fact, with a crit hit, it could have been more than enough. Alright, so... Yeah, the reason I'm worried is because of that bat, because it's going to get to us very likely on the next turn. So we need to make a point to ensure that if he gets clo close to us, that we're not bunched up because of the fact that he has Blaze too. And he probably will not be afraid to use it. Or the Vampire Bat. I always wondered, how come bats can cast magic in this game? That, that does that, that does seem weird. And I, I also want to spread everyone out as well, just so that when the bats come in, that they will not um, be um, casting their magic. That uh, they'll just attack me individually. So I actually want to move um, gradually here. We want to keep ourselves spaced out here. Oh, we come here. Um, I don't think the bat has enough range to get down to this point, so we'll put Sarah over here. And this is where it starts getting a bit dicey. Okay, now the bat, that bat from down there is starting to make a big move. Yeah, that's what I was fearing. And that's exactly what happened. So, Bowie doesn't suffer too badly, he takes an 8. He would have taken a 9 or a 10. Still got... Yeah, now the enemies are starting to get really aggressive. Alright. Jaha, start wailing away on this bat. 11 points. And it's enough to get him another experience level. He's doing a good job there as our tank. Mei, can you finish this bat off? Ah, not quite. Almost, but not quite. Well, she'll get it on her next turn, because we're going to save it for her. In the meantime, we're going to go ahead and move everyone up some more. Um, yeah. Um, Bowie, you just keep moving forward. Chester, you do the same. Yeah, so at this point, we're pretty much moving everyone up. Uh-oh. Okay, it's not magic, but... Ooh, the cow. I need to heal Chester, too. I'm worried about Bowie, but I also need to be concerned about Chester also. Alright, well... On this turn, we need to have a heal for Bowie. But yeah, we definitely need to heal Chester, or else we're gonna lose him. And points. More points for Sarah. Alright, Jaha. Actually, no, I don't want you to finish it off, but I'm worried that Peter might get the killing blow. Uh-oh. Danger, danger. Okay, it's only four. But still. Four points closer to dead. And May gets nailed by that bat. Okay, so yeah, we're definitely... And this is what I was afraid of. Yeah, Peter gets the killing blow. Not that that's a bad thing, but I would have wanted May to get it because Peter is going to be um, one of our better allies and one of our stronger allies, and um, I worry that he's going to get too much action before more people get an opportunity to do so. Okay. Um, okay, we have not weakened this bat yet. So let's go ahead and do that. Five points. Okay, Chester, fall back. Fall back. You still have healing items, do you not? You do. You have a healing drop. Use it on yourself to get back 21 points. And then these enemies are in perfect position for Kazan to cast Blaze 2. So go ahead and do that. Rain it down. For 9. And for 10. That's a 
pretty good score there for Kazan. Let's see now if Slade can do away with this bat. He does! On a crit hit, no less. And it's enough to get him another level, and Slade is the first of 12. Alright, Bowie, um, let's go ahead and have you... Uh, stand up here, and then we'll cast. Ten points. Alright. Oh no. Takes advantage of May not being healed and kills her. Blast. Revenge time. Ten points. And again. Wow, Jaha. Now that's revenge, man. That's how you get revenge. But yeah, that's sad for May there. Especially sh since she's her new ally. Alright, Sarah. Let's come in and have you... Well, first I want to see who has what in terms of health. 18, maxed out, 21. Don't need to worry about Kiwi over here. And Chester is no problem, yeah. If the bat doesn't re didn't reach me in time, I could have gotten the chance to heal her, but it's not meant to be. So, Sarah, you come in and try and finish off this goblin. She does. Pretty convincingly, actually. Alright, so now we are... We're gonna have our last set of enemies start to come in and introduce themselves to us. And shot put for seven points. Alright, Slade, I want you to attack this goblin over here. Ooh, a ten. Well done. Dark Dwarf comes in, goes after Kiwi. But Kiwi doing his job of being the tank that he is. Chester not quite in range. And neither is Kazan. Hoping for a physical attack. It is a physical attack, and it's one point. Alright, Sarah. Um, strike down the Goblin here. Been doing well so far. And she got it again! Sarah doing her job very well. She's now up to level 12. So yeah, the two party members who I always say need to have their levels prioritized, Sarah and Slade, are the two who are now, in terms of um, experience levels, the ones who have the highest level to this point. Peter's still doing what he does. Okay, let's have you go after this witch, Kiwi. Teach it a lesson. Teach her a lesson. Seven points. Alright, Kazin, I will have you go ahead and blaze two on this dwarf to soften him up a bit. And we're not having you go for the kill, but we are gonna have you cause some good damage. Alright, Chester. Um, I don't think there's really any reason to have you attack at this point, but we might as well um, kill off the dwarf anyway. Because I want the last kill to go to Kiwi, just so we can get him closer to level 11. And if kills here is enough to get Chester up to level 12. Alright. So yeah, we might as well just hold steady, because we're good at this point. Which continues to attack Kiwi. Oh, it's a cast! I was hoping it wouldn't be a cast, but that's exactly what it is, and Kiwi is down. Ah. Well, then I guess we have no choice but to finish you off in a blaze of glory. I was hoping that it wouldn't be magic, but unfortunately, that's what happened. Oh, we got a power ring dropped. All right. Yeah, that... That doesn't happen very often, but when it does, hey, take advantage of it. Alright, so we're gonna go ahead and we're going to go back into Ribble to heal our allies. Because we had two die in the previous, in this battle that just finished. 
Yeah, this this is a very expansive world this, that this game has. You can definitely do a you can definitely explore for days on end. Yeah, we need to go into the church to revive two party members. So Kiwi is knocked out, so we have to revive him for 100 gold coins. And we also have to revive Mei for 100 gold coins. Alright, um, we're gonna go ahead and say no. Because we're good at this point. So, as far as the power ring that we got, Kazan obtained it, but it's not going to do much good for him to have it. So, we'll go ahead and pass it to someone who can use it. Um, we're going to want to give it to someone who would definitely benefit from the most, an attacker whose HP, or rather, whose attack is the lowest. Kiwi would be a good fit here, but I also want to give it to someone like Mei, who could also really use it. Sarah's also a good fit for this, but she's doing pretty good on attack right now, to be honest. So, I'm gonna go ahead and give this to Mei. And then we'll go ahead and equip her with it. There we go. Alright, so now we're gonna go ahead and continue to go back to where we were. Enjoying the wonderful music, getting to go around the beautiful river and the mountains that frame this awesome landscape. Cause yeah, I, I really love the expansive world that you get to see in this game. Um, I don't remember if there's something down here or not. Um, Cause yeah, that's just a bend, but I know that they have stuck chunks of mythal in some gaps of mountains. But, I, that's something I can cover later on. Um, so yeah, we got bridges over here. There's another bridge this way. So yeah, you can really explore a lot of world around here. It's really cool. And, I don't know, is there something here? Nope. But yeah, you can see how much world we're covering. But if I remember correctly, we're going east, so we have to go to the right. So we want to... Okay, we can't go that way, but we want to go back over where we were to the bridge that we saw earlier. Yeah, I keep saying, but yeah, a lot right now, but... I mean, it's true, there's just so much awesome, expansive world to explore. Okay, for some reason I thought it was... Alright, I guess I got that wrong. Yeah, I kind of pretty much wandering at this point, because I thought I knew where I was going, but hey, even though I've played this quite a number of times, I still get lost. So where was where I needed to go? It's gotta be around here somewhere, right? <laughs> that area. Okay, it's right here. Yeah, you wouldn't, think, you wouldn't think to go over here, but this is actually where we do need to go, because in this area is a cave that takes us to our next location. You'll come to the front of Mount Volcano through this dark cave. But I heard that this cave is home to a hobgoblin. Yes, it is. Like, uh-oh. <laughs> Who said that? Me, the Hobgoblin! As if to say, well, duh. And yeah, there he is, along with his allies. Welcome to my home. Enjoy your visit because you're not leaving! And so it is here where we will begin our next battle, but we will do that in the next episode. So, the only thing that separates us from Mount Volcano and... So that separates us from Mount Volcano is this battle with this Hobgoblin and his vile fiends. And so next time, we're gonna go ahead and beat him up. And so with that, I'd like to thank everyone for watching the continuation of Let's Play Shining Force 2. And when I join you again, we will defeat this evil hob Hobgoblin and start making our way onto the base of Mount Volcano. 
So until next time everyone, this is Matthew at Navarra Autism, saying take care, and I'll see you soon.